So we're going to start this process at g7.com. We can go to the free ballistics program that's available there, top toolbar. It's going to make you sign in. If you haven't already created an account, it's real quick to do. And password. Okay, so once you're logged in, you'll come to the, the home page of uh, the ballistics calculator. Now you can tell we, we like the 7 Remington mag, that's basically what all these uh, defaults are set to. Uh, but if, if, you ha if you want to put in your load description, here's where to do it. Uh, this will keep everything straight at the range if you have multiple rifles. You can just scroll down to uh, New, hit Save Load, and it'll let you enter your load data. In this case, we're going to run the 7 mm Remington mag. I'm using Burger's 168 grain uh, VLD. That's probably all the information I need to keep this straight. I'll save that. Name already exists, obviously. So I'll, I'll save that. And, uh, and we're ready to go. If you have a specific environmental spot that you want to, uh, or target description you want to uh, input, you can do that here. I usually don't. Now, Burgers, like I said, we've got a default here set for our 7 Remington mag, and Burgers manufacturing uh, spec on their ballistic coefficient is a .617. If you need some assistance looking up a, a ballistic coefficient, you can either go to the manufacturer's website, or we have uh, some tabs here that will, will help you do that. If you're shooting some factory loads, you can select this. This will populate your BC and your velocity. If you're just looking for the bullet BC, Here's a tab that uh, you can scroll through a bunch of different bullets. Uh, so once you have your BC selected uh, and your weight inputted, then you can put in your muzzle velocity. Now, our 7 Remington mags run about 3,000 feet per second with our load, but if you have a chronograph velocity, you can put that in here. Uh, let's say you needed to put in 3,200. You can just enter it just like that. I'm going to leave this right at 3,000. That's about where our 7s shoot. Um, now uh, we have some environmental conditions that we can input here. Our altitude, our altitude at the range is uh, a little less than 5,000. It's 4475 uh, feet above sea level. And uh, I'll leave the temperature 50. It's pretty cool this morning. I think that'll be just fine. Your station pressure and relative humidity, they'll, pay, they'll play a little factor in this, but they're not very significant. Uh, when you pick an altitude and a temperature, it will automatically populate your station pressure with an average there. Now, if you've got a humidity, uh, especially you guys on the East Coast, if you've got something up around 80 or 90 percent, go ahead and put that in. It will make a little bit of a difference. Now, your scope height, uh, over to the next screen here, is uh, basically the measurement between your barrel and the center of your scope. Our systems usually run about 1.75 inches, and so it's already populated for us. Now your zero range, this is where you're going to start your data collection from. Uh, it's pretty important to have a really good zero, whether it's at 100 yards, 200, or 300 yards. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a starting point. I really like to start at 200 yards. It seems like it's a pretty convenient range. Now our scopes are click values worth a quarter minute of angle. So one click equals one quarter MOA. There's some options here if you have something other than than, uh, than quarter minute. We've got an eighth minute, tenth mil, mil, inch. If you have something else you can hit this custom MOA and enter your, your values there. Uh, we're going to use 0.25 for our demonstration today. So I'm going to verify that I've got the right data here. My range, uh, temperature, I'm going to select 50 degrees. Uh, load description, BC, the right velocity. I think everything looks good. I'm going to hit calculate. What this will do is uh, bring up a drop chart based on the information we just put in. So I'm just going to verify this. 7 Remington mag, 617, 3,000 feet per second. Uh, impact range of 200 yards, that's your zero range, altitude 4475 and your temperature 50, looks good. One thing we might change here real quick is your range increments. Um, I like to have it just a little more refined. 
I'm going to switch that to 50 yard increments instead of 100 yards. And for what we're doing today, I don't need to shoot at 2,000 yards. We'll just hit her 1,000 and we'll recalculate that. What that did was uh, uh, change the range increments to 50 yards and, and give me a drop chart out to uh, 100 or 1,000 yards. Now you can have your drops in MOAs, clicks, inches, mils, or tenth mils. We're going to use MOAs um, for what we're doing today. That all looks good. I'm just going to hit the print. We'll print a copy of this and take it to the range with us. This is what we're going to use to uh, get on target at those farther ranges. We're gathering the data we need to validate our rifle's trajectory and also get the data we need to build our, our drop compensating turrets. So we'll take this out to the range and we'll be right back with the, with the information that we get out there. Well, now that I have this rifle zeroed at 200 yards, we're ready to shoot that drop data to, to basically validate this rifle's trajectory. Now, earlier when we were on G7.com, we printed out this drop chart that's basically going to tell us what our drop is at these certain ranges. Now, I've got a target out here at 600 yards and then one out at 950 yards. And according to this drop chart, at 600 yards, I'm going to have to make nine minutes of correction to being on at 600 yards. So that's what we'll do. We'll dial nine minutes into this scope. And then I'm going to shoot a five shot group out here at 600 yards. I've got my five shot group out there at 600 yards. Now we're going to refer to our drop chart again and, and dial it up for 950. According to the chart, 19.7 minutes. Shoot another five shot group. Well, we'll go get those targets. We'll take them back to the shop. If we're high or low, we'll do some measuring, punch the data into the computer, and come up with that trajectory validation. Back from the range, I've got both of my targets sitting in front of me. I've got my 600-yard target and my 950-yard target. Now, obviously, I'm shooting just a little higher than what I was supposed to be with our drop chart. So, obviously, I'm shooting just a little faster, and that's what we're going to find out is how much faster I'm shooting. So what I'm going to do is measure every bullet hole from the center of the target and take an average of the group. So on the 600 yard target with my tape measure, I've got a bullet, I've got a bullet strike that's an inch high and another inch. And I've got one at an inch and a half, one at two and a half inches, and it looks like one at four inches. So if I add those up, I come up with 10 inches. If I divide that by the number of shots by five, that gives me the average height of my group, which is two inches. All right, so I'll keep track of that number. I'll do the same thing at 950 yard target. With my tape measure, I'm going to measure, okay, I've got one strike at, at six inches. I've got one at six and a half, it looks like. Okay, I've got two real close together right at seven, so two sevens. And then it looks like there's one right at eight. So if I add those up, it looks like it looks like 34 and a half inches. If I divide that by the number of shots again, five shots, that gives me an average of 6.9 inches high. All right, so those are the two numbers that I'm going to take back to the ballistics program. Two inches that's high at 600 and 6.9 inches high at 950. All right. So we'll go back to the computer, and I'll show you how to put those numbers in to get the right velocity, to validate the trajectory. All right, we're back from the range. We've got uh, our group height averages, 2 inches at 600 and 6.9 inches at 950. We'll go back to our inputs page at our ballistics program, 
and there's a tab here that we're going to hit. It's called trajectory validation. We'll select this tab and that's going to actually let us put in the data that we just shot at the range. So it'll populate some of the screens for you right off the bat. Uh, the same ones that we use to, to generate our drop chart will be here. So our ballistic coefficient, our bullet weight, our muzzle velocity, our scope height, and our zero. Now, if you couldn't quite get your z gun zeroed exactly on at 200 yards, let's say uh, your, your impact range is 200 yards, but you average or your group was, uh, you know, a half inch high, you can put it in here, you know, or if you zeroed your gun at 100 yards and you were an inch and a half high, you can input that here. Uh, in this case, we were zeroed right at 200 yards, uh, dead on. So we'll leave those screens blank there. Uh, our altitude was 4475 at the range. However, I, uh, the temperature was quite a bit higher. It was 80 degrees when we were shooting that data this morning. So we'll change that to 80 degrees. Same thing, our station pressure, um, it gave us an average. Our humidity is probably about 50%, so we'll leave those the same. Now here's where we're going to actually put in our, our drop data that we just shot. So we'll enter the, the yardage of the target we were shooting. We'll enter our 600 yard target first. And then this is where you'll put in your drop. Uh, now you can use clicks, you can use MOAs, you can use inches or mils. Uh, we'll use clicks. Now we adjusted nine minutes of angle according to our drop chart, and, if, and which actually equals 36 clicks. If we have quarter minute clicks, nine minutes of angle, 36 clicks. Now here's where we're going to put in that we were two inches high. So we, um, we shot at 600 yards. We adjusted 36 clicks to get there. In our group average, two inches high. Now if that was minus two, we'd just put minus two. But in this case, we were two inches. Once our data's in, we've got the right temperature and altitude where we shot our information, the target range, the click value or MOA value and drop, and then if we were high or low on our target. Then we'll calculate this. And you can see it changed our velocity. Our drop chart that we printed out, uh, the velocity was 3,000 feet per second. But because of our drop information, um, at that temperature and altitude, it, it gave us a velocity of 3027. So I'm going to just kind of write that number down. Um, and then let's go back and put in our 900 yard data. 950 yard data, sorry. And we'll see how close that matches our, our uh, 600 yard data. So at 950 yards, if you can remember from the range there, we went 19.7 minutes, which is basically 79 clicks. So 19.7 times 4, we're going to get 79. Now we were a little bit higher here. We were 6.9 inches high. Um, same temperature, same elevation, same zero. Uh, so 950 yards, we dialed 79 clicks, and we shot 6.9 inches high was our average group. So I'll calculate that now. And you can see it gave me a velocity of 3020. So that data is really close. Uh, our 600 yard data was 3027, and our 950 yard data is 3020. So those numbers jive really well. Now if you get something that doesn't jive, that you're, uh, you know, you're more than... 50 feet a second difference or more than 25 feet per second difference you might want to just verify that information by shooting your data over again but these are real close within seven feet a second of each other so I'm just going to take an average of that 30 you know just let's call it 3025 so my true velocity now according to my drop is 3025 feet per second with a 617 BC so those two numbers your BC, 6, 617, and our new calculated velocity of 3025 average, those are the two numbers that, you, that you're going to need to input when you're building your BDC turret. Uh, essentially what we've done now is validated our rifle's trajectory. 
The manufacturer spec on the ammunition said 3,000 feet per second, but our field data tells us that we're going 3,020 plus feet per second. So we validated our rifle's trajectory. Now we know how much drop we're going to have at, at different ranges. Um, so you can go you can go back to our home screen uh, to generate a new drop chart. We'll just enter the right data, 3,020 feet, 25 feet per second, and we can um, calculate that and print a new drop chart if we want. Or we can take our new BC and velocity, enter g7.com, and order your uh, ballistics turret for your G7 scope. So we have just validated our rifle's trajectory.